Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 9 to 13. It's the Gospel for Friday of the 13th week of Ordinary Time. St. Matthew writes, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs house. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That's from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. And what does it suggest to us? Well, at various times in history, great changes have come to a people or a society, and often it has been due to the change of mind of the ruler or chief persons in that society. All this stands to reason. For instance, Constantine converted to the Christian religion and the Roman Empire soon after found itself with Christianity as its official religion. That having been said, we must not overlook the slow, silent and yet decisive role played by the little person in bringing about momentous changes. Consider Constantine again. Constantine's conversion would have been unimaginable had it not been for the nearly three centuries of unconquerable Christian witness amid inexorable persecution. That witness was sustained by the little person. What the ordinary person does in his ordinary life is very important in the providence of God. The Roman Empire became Christian because of the lives of countless ordinary Christians. Consider what happened after the fall of the Roman Empire in the West due to the barbarian invasions. Over some three or four hundreds of years of what we commonly call the Dark Ages, Christianity again triumphed. Europe emerged as a Christian continent. It was due to the ordinary lay faithful, the ordinary priest, the ordinary monk, the ordinary bishop, the ordinary missionary, faithfully working away amid immense difficulties of Viking invasions and numerous upsets. With this hidden stream of witness going on, the outstanding individuals who emerged or led the church were able to have their due effect. The point, though, is that we ought to be aware of the importance of the ordinary Christian in the providence of God and in God's saving presence in the church and in history. Now then, with this in mind, let us contemplate our Lord in our gospel today. He is passing by and he sees an ordinary tax collector at his customs post. He called him to follow him. An ordinary event in an ordinary life, but viewed from the broad perspective of God's saving work, it was momentous. There is no reason to think that Matthew was immensely gifted, gifted possibly, but not extraordinarily so. He was totally disposed to accept the word and call of Christ. And that was the important thing for this otherwise ordinary person. He offered the obedience of faith. God can do the rest. But then look what happened after Matthew's immediate and total response. Our Lord dined at the house of Matthew and, we read, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. Again, they were ordinary persons, and even less than ordinary, in the sense that they were regarded as obvious sinners 
and probably were so in fact. They drew near to Christ and chose to be in his company. We have no way of telling what became of this in terms of their becoming disciples in some sense, but it is surely a picture of much of Christian history. Christ and his church is above all a great family of ordinary children of God, sinners all, who are called to respond to the call of Christ as did Matthew. The little man, as it were, who is in Christ has a glorious role to play in the course of history and his importance derives from his being in Christ by baptism and grace. If he follows the Lamb whithersoever it goes, as the book of Revelation puts it, then God's work will be done and in the long run great things will be achieved. Those ordinary tax collectors and sinners who came to sit with Jesus and his disciples are the stuff of salvation history. We can all identify with them knowing that our lives will achieve their purpose if they are lived out as branches of the great vine which is Christ. Our Heavenly Father is the vine dresser and fruit will most certainly come forth from the vine. The important thing is to do the will of God in our everyday life bearing witness to Jesus in our fidelity and our word. Thus will God's kingdom advance, and we who are in Jesus will be its instruments, however ordinary and unworthy we know ourselves to be. Thus is the ordinary life a thing of grandeur. Let us never underestimate the importance of of the life which God in his goodness has given to us. We have one shot, and once it is fired, it is all over. That one shot is the life we have been given. Let us aim carefully and high. It must hit a high target, and that target is union with Christ, and a full and generous sharing in his work, which is the redemption of mankind. No matter how small on the stage of things we feel ourselves to be, let us resolve to do our best.